What's up guys? We're continuing the iPhone series today with part three and we're diving into the world of software. Last video, we talked about the hardware inside your iPhone and today we're gonna introduce firmware. Firmware is the code that's closest with the hardware and it's probably the lowest level of code on the software stack. All right, let's do it. Remember part two of the video, we did a basic overview of the hardware inside this iPhone. There are a lot of SOCs, integrated circuits, processors that make up the hardware guts of this phone. Graphics processors, application processors, cache memories, tons of stuff. Remember that hardware needs software to run or it's probably as useful as this paperweight. I'm sure we've all had to restart our phones many times before we see that little apple even appear, there's a lot of software that's already executed. This is the software that you really never see and how does it work? Okay, let's quickly recall one of the basic tenets of computers and that is that a processor must execute programs that exist in RAM. When you're on your phone and you tap into Instagram, iOS has to go into its flash, non-volatile memory get Instagram, load it into memory, and then start running it. Instagram, Facebook, and all those apps you use don't magically appear in your RAM when you start your phone. When you first turn on your phone, when you first hit that power button, your RAM has nothing inside it. It's empty, just completely empty. So what the hell happens to get your phone going if there's nothing in RAM? How does it even get going? How does it boot up? All right, so now it's time to introduce a special type of memory that's not RAM, and it's called ROM, R-O-M. ROM, or read-only memory, can maintain its data without electricity. It's non-volatile. No changing, no changing. ROM memories are usually very, very small, much smaller than the 32 gig flash card you have. So this brings us to firmware. What exactly is firmware? Firmware is a type of read-only code that can exist and execute from ROM memory. The majority of programs have to exist in RAM to be run by the processor, but there's a little bit of special memories, ROM being one of those special memories that the processor can execute some special code. You can't just log into the App Store, log into your iCloud account and update your firmware. It's not that easy. What we have to realize is that the firmware that ships with this phone comes hand in hand with the hardware. They come at the same time. Remember when I told you guys that if your software is busted, you can just download an update and fix a bug. But if your hardware is messed up, you're screwed. Firmware is pretty much on the same level as that hardware. If your firmware is busted, has a lot of bugs, it's screwed. You're screwed, the whole system is Firmware is kind of like a really hard software. It's not soft at all. That's why it's firm. It's really firm. If Apple ordered 1 million hardware components to power their new iPhone 10s, and that hardware had some busted firmware, they might have to remanufacture or recreate all of them. It would, it would be crazy. If you guys use PCs a lot and you don't have smartphones, you probably see the BIOS startup when you turn on your computer, and that's another type of firmware. So what's the purpose of this thing? What does it do? Why is it important? You guys probably already guessed it at this point, but one of firmware's basic jobs is to power up the system and perform any basic configurations. The code that we write for firmware must be kept as simple and bug-free as possible. We actually don't wanna spend much time executing firmware code because you can't update it. If something's wrong, you're really screwed. We need to spend as little time as possible inside that code and make sure it's really simple and very well tested. Okay, so let's just do a basic walkthrough of your phone and it's off and we're gonna press the power button. The first thing that the firmware probably does when you press power on your iPhone is to perform some basic configurations so that it can communicate with your flash memory. Your flash memory is where all the goodies are stored. It's where iOS is stored. It's where all your apps are stored. It's where all your silly videos are stored. It starts in flash. 
memory is empty right now, or RAM is empty right now, excuse me. Pretty much the first thing we have to do is begin a communication with flash memory, extract bits of software out of there and start executing that and get out of firmware. So we're gonna load some code from flash memory, right? But where exactly do we move it to? Processors can actually execute code that doesn't necessarily have to be in RAM. Like we just talked about just now, processors can execute little bits of code in raw memory. Besides ROM, there's also a lot of other cool different types of memories that exist in your system. There's little bits of shared memory that different processors can execute. There's layers of cache memories that you can even execute code from. RAM is the biggest area where you can execute code. It's the largest space, but there's also much smaller, highly specific areas where you can execute code from that doesn't have to be RAM. Caches, ROM code, shared memories, special types of hardware. So the firmware's first job is to copy some real software from flash memory into one of those special locations so the processor can execute it. We want to get into real software. When we power on our phone, the first thing that firmware probably does is copy a very simple bootloader program from flash into a place where the CPU can execute it. All right, so I just said a funny word, bootloader. What does that mean exactly? First thing to know about a bootloader is that it's actual software, meaning that it's soft and you can update it easily. It's not, it's not firm. This bootloader usually does much fancier things. It initializes and powers on all the hardware. It loads iOS. Once iOS is ready, the bootloader can transition into iOS and then you see that little Apple icon. Embedded developers are the people that write this type of code. I spent two years at Qualcomm as an embedded developer and actually wrote a bunch of firmware and device drivers while I was there. That was my first job out of school and it was pretty crazy because we shared the same timelines as hardware did. When the hardware would have to be ready, our firmware code would have to be ready. We were on a totally different timeline than the rest of the software. Because firmware is on the bottom of the stack, it's not really sexy and it's not really something you can show off to your friends. You can't be like, hey man, check out this cool firmware I wrote. They would just be like. All right guys, closing out the video soon, I just wanted to end with a couple cool, interesting facts about firmware. You can actually rewrite bits, rewrite actual specific pieces of memory to make updates to your firmware. This is not your simple code recompile download. This is actually updating like 100 special assembly instructions to update your firmware. It's really difficult and it's limited. All right, so remember that our phone has many different SOCs on it and many different types of processors all doing different things. Each one of those processors could actually run a little bit of its own firmware to get booted up and configured. We just kind of talked through firmware from the perspective of one processor but we didn't even touch how firmware could operate across many processors across the whole system. Different processors, each implementing different ISAs, different architectures. How would firmware operate across so many different things? All right guys, that's the end of the video and hope you enjoyed it. Firmware is really the software you never see that gets executed before you even see that little Apple icon on your phone. Even though it's not sexy, it's still really, really, really important and another essential part of the software stack. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video and appreciate this little bit of special code that a lot of embedded developers around the world write every day. Um, if you have any questions, just leave me a question here and please subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll be continuing this series, all right? Take care and I will see you guys next time.